Seminyak or Sanor? Today we're talking about the beautiful tropical island of Bali, known for its rich culture, beautiful landscapes and great energy. Bali has many different areas that each have their own unique lifestyle, but which one would be the best fit for you? Seminyak is known for its vibrant nightlife and great shopping scene, while Sanor is a more laid back lifestyle. We'll be comparing our personal experiences in both of these places for factors including accommodation, cost of living, beaches, nightlife, the community, and things to do. So considering that Sanor and Seminyak are only 15 kilometers apart, we won't be discussing the obvious similarities like food, traffic, and the weather. So whether you're a beach bum, a party goer, or you're just looking for a quiet place to call home, this video will help you decide which place will be best for you. So let's start with a brief overview of our experiences in each of those places. First off was in Seminyak. So how did you find staying in Seminyak? Yeah, I liked staying in Seminyak. It's a good place to start your Bali journey if you're just arriving. There's lots to do good nightlife, lots of restaurants, and a really nice vibe if you're after that. How about your experience in Sana? Yeah, that's been nice too. It's definitely distinct from Seminyak, but I think after a while in Seminyak, it can be a bit busy. So I think we liked the kind of quieter, slower pace of life in Sana. So that was a good move, I think. Let's talk about some of the specific factors that are different between these two places to stay. So first, let's talk about the overall vibe of the place, starting with Seminyak. I think it's definitely a lot more crowded than Sanor is. It's very touristy and it's more often a first stop when you first arrive in Bali. So lots of shops, for example, are really geared towards tourists and you see lots of people driving, walking around that are particularly tourists. So that makes it quite crowded. How about for walking and stuff? Yeah, I would agree that like in Seminyak, walking isn't really a thing that you do. You'd probably just drive anywhere or everywhere, except for on the beach, of course. I mean, you can walk along the beachfront, which is lovely, but there's no like pavement or path there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really difficult to walk, I think. Sometimes no pavement at all. Sometimes it's just used as parking. Yeah. And of course that happens in San Or too, but I would say that generally the pavements are wider. They're easier to walk. That makes it a bit easier for walking around. And as we mentioned, Seminyak is definitely a bit more touristy. So maybe along with that goes a little bit more petty crime, but we didn't experience that. Both places are generally very safe. Next, let's talk about the beaches in both places because both Seminyak and Sanor are coastal towns. Seminyak is on the west coast, but Sanor is on the east coast. So one big difference is Seminyak, you'll get really nice sunsets, but in Sanor, it's sunrises and not so good sunsets. So in Seminyak, the beaches are pretty nice. Uh, they run all up the stretch of the west coast. The beach physically is a lot bigger, but the main thing about Seminyak beaches is the water. It's good for surfing, which we'll talk about later, but it doesn't make it very nice with massive waves. It's not so good for just chilling in the water because it's really choppy. On top of that, the beaches are a bit crowded and along with that goes a few hawkers. You will have people coming up to you quite often trying to sell bracelets and things like that, which we understand, but it can detract a bit when you're just trying to, you know, enjoy your time on the beach. Whereas in Sanal, yeah, I mean, personally, I love Sanor beaches. They're a lot more chilled, they're calmer, and you can actually go swimming in the water, which is so nice, which is what we like to do. And you have like water activities there as well, like stand-up paddleboard, parasailing, canoeing, and you can go surfing, but it's a bit like further out. And another thing is the beaches are really clean compared to Seminyak as well. And that's really nice to see. You don't want to be like swimming with like trash around and whatnot. Also in Sanor beaches, they have a really nice paved promenade, which is only for walking, also bicycles and electric bikes. But unlike in Seminyak, which, where you don't have that. I've also already made a video, a guided walking tour of the Sanor beaches. You can check this video out up here if you want to check out that. Next up, we'll talk about accommodation and cost of living. Well, really, I think they're pretty similar. Maybe Sanor has a slight edge that is slightly cheaper, but in terms of housing, the whole island really has a bit of a crisis with housing at the moment. Crazy priced villas are not that great value for money. But I do think that was one of the negatives about staying in Bali is trying to find reasonably priced, comfortable housing. The cost of living is still pretty good all over Bali and I would say that 
Sanor and Semenyak, there's not too much difference between them in terms of eating out, going to cafes and doing travel and things like that from here. We would say though that we found in Sanur it's mainly geared towards families and older people looking to retire. So if you're looking for a place to stay maybe for a month, we're not sure you can find that easily with a good price. It's mainly geared towards yearly rentals. So definitely keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was true for us. I mean, we found a few options like that, but a yearly rental didn't really work with our plans, you know, staying in one place and committing to 12 months. We did manage to find a decent monthly price rental here in Sanor, but that was a bit tricky to find. So following on from what Emma just mentioned, we'll talk about the communities here in Sanor and Semenyak. As Emma mentioned, I think the Sanor community is generally a bit older than maybe in Semenyak or on the west coast. You do see a lot of signs for retirement visas. I mean, pros and cons with that, we like it because it's a bit slower pace of life but maybe it doesn't have that kind of nightlife or maybe you don't find your communities especially compared to some places like Changu which has lots of expats or travelers of a younger age and maybe with more similar interests. What do you think? Have you found a community in Sanor more so than Semenyak or about the same? I would say it all comes down to like your interests as well. Like for us, we like going to the gym, so we meet people there too. And we also like playing board games and we've made friends that way as well. So it really comes down to like your hobbies. Maybe if you're a big surfer and you live on the West Coast, you'll connect with other people like that. But for us, we kind of like a more chilled, relaxed lifestyle, which goes well with Sano. However, I would say it's been a bit more difficult to find our crowd, but that's okay. Yeah, so on that point, maybe if you're in a couple, then Sano can be okay. Maybe as a solo traveler, especially a bit younger, then it might be a bit more difficult to find those groups. As Emma said, doing the activities that you love, you can find a like-minded community. That being said, Emma said we like to play board games and there are a couple of board game cafes in Semenyak, but there aren't here in Sano. So maybe in that respect, it's a little bit less not developed, but a little bit less variety and choice with some of those more niche things. And I reckon definitely Semenyak, if surfing's your thing, you'll find a much better community for that there. So next we'll talk about the nightlife. And as you can probably guess from what we said about the age range of the communities, we think the nightlife is definitely better in Semenyak. Not to say that there's nothing going on in Sanor, but things tend to close a bit earlier. I think we see a few bars, but they're not very busy, just a few bald heads. <laughs> <laughs> and not so popular. Whereas in Semenyak, you have a few beach bars and even clubs that people come from other areas to visit. For example, La Favela or Shishi and beach clubs like Potato Head, Kudata. So they're a lot more well-known. So talking further about things to do in Semenyak or Sanor. As I mentioned, in Semenyak, there's quite a few popular beach clubs. You don't really have those so much in Sanor, I don't think, but one big difference is you do have lots of big luxury hotel chains in Sanor. For example, the Mercure, Hyatt Regency, and as Resort. They're not clubs, but they are a nice place. They've normally got a swimming pool, lounges, and you can do day passes and have great food right on the beach. Uh, which is quite a nice feature of Sanor, I think. Yeah, definitely. We love chilling just by the beach and prefer that over nightlife, probably. So yeah, for us, Sanor wins in that way. So both places, Semenyak and Sanor, they're still in Bali. They are still touristy areas and pretty developed. So you'll be able to find bougie cafes and really nice restaurants, international food in both of them. It's really not too much of a distinction, apart from maybe Semenyak is a bit bigger and maybe a bit more developed. So probably you do have a little bit more choice. Whereas in Semenyak, you might have five cafes on your road, but Sanor, you maybe got three, even though Sanor is just basically one big main road, which is <laughs> Jalan Danau Tamlingan, and basically everything is on that. Whereas Semenyak is a bit more broken up, more side streets, but I'd say there's probably a little bit more variety in Semenyak, but still good choice in both. Yeah, it's not been difficult to find like really nice cafes and restaurants in Sano or in Semenyak, so that's a big thumbs up from us because we love eating and drinking coffee. <laughs> Good, and if travel is important to you, like it is for us, both of them are in pretty good locations. Semenyak, it definitely has the edge when it comes to traveling the West Coast. 
For example, it's much easier to access Changu, to go down to Kuta, even I think a bit closer to the airport. Whereas in Sanol, it takes about 30 minutes even to just cross Denpasar to get to Semenyak, which you'd need to do to go to Changu or Kuta really. Um, I suppose Sanol does make it a bit easier to travel to North or East Bali, because you don't have to go through Denpasar and Semenyak you would have to do that. But both of them are about the same for exploring the rest of Bali, which for both of them means quite slow, it takes a lot of time even to Ubud. I think it's what, about 20 kilometers and it takes about an hour and a half. So probably <laughs> from both of them it's the same, not very quick, but both are doable. So one thing that I think we actually did do well with coming to stay in Bali, the way that we did it was to arrive in Semenyak and then later to move to Sanor. The reason for this is Semenyak, I think you might get a little bit less of a culture shock if you go there because it's very developed, it's touristy, it's easy to find your way around, you have all of your conveniences around and it's quite easy to, you know, integrate and settle in there. And then we moved to Sanor when we wanted to enjoy the beaches a bit more, to escape the crowds and have a bit of a slower pace of life. But if you arrive first to Sanor, depending on what kind of person you are, then you might find it a little bit boring or too slow. I think that's quite a good way to do it. You can start in Semenyak to settle in, work out how things go, and then you can choose somewhere else. If you want to get more community or more nightlife, you could go to Changu, although be prepared to pay a lot more. Or you could go to Sanor, maybe save a bit of money, but at the expense of being a bit quieter. It really depends on you and what suits your lifestyle the best. So those were our opinions on both Semenyak and Sanor after staying in both of those. Our advice is that you should try for yourself to see which one suits you and your personality. Although they do share a lot of similarities because they both are on Bali Island, they do have some distinct differences, so you should find out for yourself which one works for you. If you want to see a realistic month in the life of our first month staying here in Bali, you can check this video out up here. Otherwise, for more budget travel and Bali experiences, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> Bye. Bye.